Do you ever think you need to defend God? Like somehow God's name and God's image is going to be made fun of or mocked by someone and you need to just kind of take up for God? The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Look at how this plays out in 1 Samuel chapter 5. The Philistines have taken the Ark of the Covenant. They beat the Israelites in battle because of their disobedience to God. So now they take the Ark of the Covenant, they take it and they put it next to Dagon, their god, in his temple. The priest comes back in the morning and Dagon has fallen over on his face. Well, you've got to quickly get your god up and be like, no one saw that, right? The next day, they come back, and Dagon not only has fallen over, but his head broke off and his hands broke off. Now you have to glue your god back together. Isn't it sad how our gods fail us? Any other god other than God Almighty, Jehovah God, is going to fail you. You're going to be piecing it back together, whether it's uh, whatever it is, financial or relational, whatever, whatever thing you put in your life that's God. And so... They wanted to believe desperately that this was an accident, that like this just actually happened on accident twice. And so they just keep moving on with, you know, having the temple with Dagon and the Ark of the Covenant. So God allows tumors to form, the Bible says. Now these tumors in the, the Hebrew are actually more like hemorrhoids that are bleeding with, with dysentery. Uh, horrible experience. And uh, pretty soon, the people of Ashdod are like, we can't live like this anymore. we got to get rid of the Ark of the Covenant. So they decide, instead of submitting to God, instead of humbling themselves before God, to send it to Gath, another Philistine city. So the, the Gathites get the Ark of the Covenant, and they realize very quickly, now we got the tumors, which was really the hemorrhoids and the bleeding and the nastiness. And so after a while, they're like, you know what? sent to Ekron, which was another Philistine city. And then these men start dying, and they get the tumors. And these, these guys are like, you know what? No way, okay? This goes back to Israel, because we're tired of it. Uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2, 15 and 16, that we are either a sweet-smelling aroma to people or the smell of death. And the difference is, if you surrender and submit to God... God is great for you, and God's people are great for you. But if you don't surrender your life and don't submit to God on a daily basis, God's glory is not going to depart. That's what we learned in the last chapter was that this woman says, Ichabod, God's glory is depart from Israel. God, God's glory never departs from anything. God will glorify himself with or without you and me. The question is, Will we today submit our will and surrender to Christ? That's when the glory happens in our lives.